what happened on July 5th of 2022 at the 2nd of March? Uh, yes, now, let's get my car. Emotional testimony from Ava Jones as she took the stand in the trial of Michael Hurley. Thanks so much for joining us here at noon on Brooke Hash. The Hurley is accused of driving into Jones and her family in downtown Louisville just two years ago. And that incident resulted in the death of Ava's dad, Trey Jones. Ava told prosecutors the incident put an end to her basketball career after suffering a traumatic brain injury. Her mom, Amy, echoed that same sentiment this morning while speaking on the stand, saying her daughter has never been the same since that crash. We do have reporters inside the courtroom right now, and you can hear more of Amy's testimony and others yet to come and take the stand beginning today at 4. Right now, the final pretrial hearing for former LMPD officer Brett Hankison is underway. He's charged with depriving Breonna Taylor of her civil rights, and his retrial is set to start on Monday. Nearly a year ago, a mistrial was declared after a jury could not reach a verdict following a three-week trial and four days of deliberation. Hankison faces two federal civil rights violations for blindly firing 10 rounds into Taylor's apartment as well as a neighbor's. We'll have the latest developments from that court hearing coming up on WHAS 11 News at 4. We have made it to your Friday. It is 12.01 and joined with meteorologist Sam Gabrielli and taking a look outside. Beautiful blue skies. We have fortunately had a really nice, quiet week and so far looking at a quiet weekend. Yes, yeah, so far we're in the clear, brook. We've been in the clear for quite some time. The only rain that we've seen as of the past month or two, even two months, was the remnants of Hurricane Helene. And thankfully, Helene did bring all that rainfall because we would have been in a huge deficit uh, with the drought. So luckily, there's no drought underway. We can go ahead and enjoy the sunshine and very mild air uh, without feeling too guilty. Some upper 60s so far to get the afternoon rolling. And to the north right now, uh, basically speaking, a little cooler air. Uh, some upper 60s from Indianapolis towards Bloomington. 72 in Evansville. And once again, we're actually going to be noticing some 80s by the time we get into the afternoon hours tomorrow, and especially during the day on Sunday. That's going to be setting up for a late summer type of feel to our weekend as temperatures once again in the 80s can be expected. We'll take it if you do like it on the mild side for being in mid October, but that will be coming with a price to be paid because into next week we're going to be watching some frost potential as the cold front is going to be sliding through as we get into Sunday evening of this weekend. So here we are with time throughout much of today and tomorrow. We're staying very mild and even during much of the day Sunday. Now keep in mind peak heating is right around 4 p.m on Sunday. So the front's going to be to our north. But you can see the cooler air kind of racing in just in time for Monday and much of next week. I'm going to be detailing just how cool our afternoon temperatures will be and where the 30 degree readings into the morning hours can be felt as we get you into the course of next week. All the much more on that forecast in a few more minutes. Thank you, Sam. More of that aftermath of Hurricane Milton now. The storm out in the Atlantic Ocean after cutting a destructive path across Florida that spawned tornadoes and killed at least 15 people, millions more without power. ABC's Jacqueline Lee joins us from St. Petersburg with more. A bird's eye view of Milton's destruction over Vero Beach, Florida. Images from the Indian River County Sheriff's Office showing homes leveled by deadly tornadoes. Living rooms where families once gathered reduced to rubble. In St. Petersburg, a mobile home owner says he lost everything. Only thing I got left in my life. If it was going to go, I was going to go too. So I was trying to protect it. But if I had to do it again, I don't think I would. A similar scene further south in Palm Beach Gardens. Drone footage capturing damaged roofs along the waterfront. Places that I saw looked like it was an atomic bomb blew it up. Across the state in Siesta Key where Milton came ashore, a calmer scene. Roads flooded and scattered debris, but the area left mostly intact. The outer bands of the storm left the state yesterday afternoon, and yet you already have 1.6 million accounts have been restored in the state of Florida. But in the Gulf of Mexico, the Coast Guard capturing this dramatic rescue of a man clinging to an ice chest. They say his fishing vessel became disabled and he tried unsuccessfully to repair it ahead of Milton. They lost radio contact with him when the storm struck. 
and estimate he survived a nightmare scenario. Winds between 75 and 90 miles an hour and waves up to 25 feet. Meantime, on Capitol Hill, six states are still under emergency disaster declarations as a result of Helene and Milton and still need aid. Jacqueline Lay, ABC News, St. Petersburg. Governor Andy Beshear thanked the Kentucky first responders who are currently stationed around Florida and North Carolina. Firefighters from across Louisville are working active new rescues in Newport Ritchie, Florida. The EMS crew posted these photos to Facebook saying due to the changes, the whole area is expected to flood now. In addition to crews like this, Governor Beshear said we have four guardsmen helping with communication support. Uh, what you see after these disasters is you bring in uh, resources for a limited period of time and then replace them. And of course, a as you progress, the mission changes. Uh, one from search and rescue, which are the first couple days, which require a certain type of skilled training. And, and then it's to meeting people's basic needs of, of housing and food. Jefferson County Special Operations also has a crew in and around Tampa. Along with water rescues, they're also working to restore electricity to more than two and a half million people in Florida currently without power.